between the time when the oceans drank Atlantis and the rise of the sons of Arius, there was an age undreamed of. And onto this, Croc, destined to wear the jeweled crown of Aquilonia upon a troubled brow. It is I, his chronicler, who alone can tell thee of his saga. Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. <laughs> Let me know if you guys know what that quote is from. What is um, Croc Nation? Welcome back to Croc Star ASMR this evening. I will be reviewing Dark and Darker, a new dungeon crawling game uh, that is in its fourth test stage for this weekend. Um, it's actually for the week Sunday to Sunday, and I think I've put 29 hours in the last three days in this game. I've been playing it non-stop. It, it scratches all the right itches for me. Uh, we'll be reviewing some gameplay footage throughout uh, this video from the last three days. You will see my overlays change. This is my final overlay I created just for this game, as well as a custom stinger. I think it looks really, really clean. Before we get into the video, guys, once again, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. As well, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up so other fellow ASMR gamer enthusiasts uh, can find the video. Well, guys, this is uh, a game that's been in development for about a year now. I remember hearing about it over a year ago because people in the hardcore gaming community, such as Escape from Tarkov and Hunt Showdown, uh, were really interested in this. And what really caught my attention as my custom stinger was it's a dungeon crawler. It's all fantasy dungeon crawling. I absolutely am in love with. Uh, I'm a huge fantasy comics, fantasy stories, uh, fantasy movies fan as well. We do get together and play Dungeons and Dragons. We haven't actually continued our campaign in almost a year and a half now, which we really have been discussing trying to get back on the horse, so to speak. So basically it's a P. game, much like Tarkov and much like Hunt Showdown. You're up against other players as well as enemy AI, and there's the risk versus reward aspect of both of those games, in that you can choose to stay and keep looting when an uh, exit appears, or you can choose uh, to leave and take with what goods you have to fight another day, so to speak. There are your classic fantasy classes here. You have your wizards, you have your clerics, your fighters, your barbarians, as well as your rangers. Um, all have different abilities and attributes. All can use different types of weapons. And uh, I, in classic fashion, much like my d and using a barbarian who just matches uh, my play style. I've been playing this, like I said, since uh, I think Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't recall. I actually downloaded it the day before I played it for the first time because I wasn't quite sure um, if I was going to bother because I know it was only available. I really am glad I did, I did because it's uh, one of the better games I've played since Hunt Showdown. That's not competitive, um, competitive PvP like the ride games I play. So yeah, like I said, the main premise is you spawn into a dungeon. There are only two maps available right now. This main map, which is a castle, which is for uh, groups of two, groups of three 
are solos if you're brave enough. And uh, there's a solo caves with goblins just for solo players. Here you see another player come up and try to falsely blow us up. Uh, with a Molotov. I turned the lights out and uh, so he couldn't see us. Up there, so we can get some light. Light plays a massive factor in this game, hence, dark and darker. It's dark, but it's not overbearingly dark, and you always have a little bit of light with your torches. And uh, but, yeah, setting up ambushes and making sure to check your shadows is a huge part of this, this game when you want to cover your ass. And uh, yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. I'm really, really uh, loving the overlays and the webcams I made for this. The cam, sorry, the cam overlay. As you can see, it's got a medieval animated cam overlay. I actually got um, Red Sonia sitting on top of the Rockstar logo, and I managed to loop her right like through the A of a star, which looks really neat and clean. This game exploration and looting. It's a looting game in the end of it. That's the end goal. There's PvP that's really fun and really challenging. It's probably one of the harder games you'll play if you want to get into it. It's got so many different aspects of so many different games, you guys. It's got a Dark Souls aspect in that you have to um, time enemy attacks for your counterattacks. It's got a Skyrim feel to it in the combat. It actually feels kind of like Skyrim. Got that Escape from Dark off and um, on Showdown, Risk versus Reward. Uh, you lose what you have on you when you die. And uh, yeah, it's got that D&D &D factor as well. Hence the name Dark and Darker even. It's a uh, it's a great game. These pots here are where these spiders spawn. That's why you see me smashing them. If you don't smash them after you kill the two spiders or the three, depending on what they spawn, uh, fresh spiders will come out. You see me smashing chests and everything. That's actually a barbarian attribute. Uh, only he can do it. It speeds up looting. And uh, I love looting. I love these type of games. Unshodown really wasn't about looting. Unshodown was more about hunting and capturing a big bounty for money. Uh, it added looting a little bit later on, but a game like Tarkov is all about looting. As well as the PvP. You can pick up items and clothing and armor that is... Uh, based on our rarity. Your typical green, blue, purple. Purple being the best, green being the, the lowest of the uncommon items. They all have little boosts and little bonuses. Here's my teammate getting chased by um, or he was getting blown down from a ranger. I'm trying to catch him. Like I said, it's very, very Size for the gameplay, he actually kills my teammate. He closes the door behind me, and I can't open it in time because he can open and close doors quicker than I can. It's just a passive for being a ranger. One of their passives is um, they can make fires and open and close doors quickly. Same thing with the rogue or the thief in classic D&D fashion. He makes a mistake in not calculating me running him down again without anything in my hands, which makes you run quicker. And I'm able to mow him down with my axe fairly easy. His name was Find Around and Fuck Out. I'm just going to loot all his jewels he had on him. You actually don't get a lot. Uh, for all the jewelry you get, you might, in a really good run, you might, you might get a hundred. Uh, you might get a hundred gold after you sell everything. Here's another guy. Now, he had that blue orb around him because he uh, took a protection. 
as long as he doesn't move, he can stay invisible uh, for a um, set little set amount of time. Now I'm convinced he's a rogue, so uh, I think he went in here and he's standing in one of these corners, which is what they do. So I plan on his swing. See if I can hit him. Not hitting anything. So I'm a bone ready to give up. Then I see a gas zombie. Our mummy releases its gas over here. gas zombies or mummies are really annoying. I see him to the left and he goes invisible, but I kind of get an idea where he is and I hit him while he's invisible. Now this also has a battle royale aspect, guys, that on Showdown and Tarkov do not have. There's a circle that closes in, much like your classic BR. In this case, it's a swarm of locust bugs, almost like the movie The Mummy. And, uh, yeah, they'll do damage if you stay out too long. And just like classic BRs, the damage increases depending on how small the circle is. These games, by the way, guys, I think they have a, a 15 minute or 15 minute time limit, maybe less. They're quick, quick games. Once the second last circle uh, appears, there's opportunities to escape with blue portals. There's a blue portal like you see ahead. And then there's red portals, and that's the riskier ones. You can actually take that portal and take it to a hell zone with extreme PvP, but you can risk a reward. There's a lot more better loot down there. This blue one just takes you home. This is how you escape. And uh, my teammates are both dead. I'm pretty sure that I'm the alive, so I'm just trying to destroy these chests and get inside them. There's a mimic, a classic D&D villain, fantasy villain, a mimic chest. And I'm just trying to loot what I can and, um, and then get out of here. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm the last one left. This game's amazing for sound, so you can usually hear groups either fighting zombies, walking, there's their steel-plated you hear them smashing things. So, uh, I haven't heard anything, so I'm assuming everyone, everyone's either gone or dead. I haven't been paying attention to the, the icons in the top right that let you know. So, I escaped. Our team escaped. And there, there was one more player left, and he died to the locust. Right at the entrance gate. was actually from uh, earlier this morning, I believe. I do have more games here for you guys for your enjoyment, so uh, let's get into a little bit more. So this game uh, is played as solos, uh, duos, or trios, and it does have uh, a feature where you can find random people to fill out a party, because when you are doing and duos, you're usually up against a lot of trios, and therefore are at a disadvantage. And in a game like this, where risk versus reward, you lose everything, you want to have as much advantage as you can, so it is fun. And it, I find it fun to play with strangers, it's, you never know what you're going to get. You might get a coward, you might get a thief, you might get a ballsy player, you might get someone who really, really which is something that happened at the end of this actual uh, session from earlier this morning. And sometimes you just get morons, which is also equally hilarious. So this is one of those games where we are playing with a random uh, third after getting our ass handed to us as a duo pair for uh, most of the morning. So again, these uh, gas mummies, if you don't hit them in time, they a glass cloud that just wanders aimlessly in the map. Uh, and obviously if you run into it, you get hurt a bit. So this is like in the sewer basement area spawn. Your spawns you have will dictate on your party size. They have spawns for treehouse. Spawn parts for if you're in a duo party. And they have spawns if you're so cute. Um... Uh, 
that's about the only thing that um, is guaranteed in here. And this is very RNG when it comes to spawns and loot and uh, everything else. I guess the other thing too is they have bosses in this game and they're always in the same spot. Classic uh, fantasy type uh, traps and hidden doors and hidden stairs as you can see. There's a pressure plate so this person can go and loot those two chests. I'm waiting for him to jump off so that I can step off of it. There is no fall damage, strangely enough, in a game that takes itself a little too seriously sometimes. But yeah, guys, so far, let me know what uh, your impressions are from this super, super, super relaxing ASMR a whisper to game. And if you have been playing this game and enjoying it, absolutely let me know uh, what your thoughts are on that so far, and also what you think can be uh, improved upon. The biggest thing for me, I think, and hope they improve upon is the healing aspect. Uh, right now, the healing is almost it's almost non-existent um, in terms of. When you're injured, you have to heal up now, and it actually takes you about maybe 30 seconds to a minute to slowly get your health back because it's not immediate. It's over, I think, 20, 20 to 25 seconds, depending on the type of potion you take. So it's very slow. So if you're in a situation where you're fighting people and you manage to get away, just to heal up, you're never going to heal up in time to defend yourself. Uh, there are insta heals. Heal up your entire health bar, but they take incredibly long to um, use. There's a surgical kit that will give you 100% health, but I think it takes 30 seconds to uh, apply it to yourself. So, yeah, there's that for sure. That would make combat in this game a little more fun. Right now it's really on who gets ambushed first. Gets the advantage through ambushing. As you see, my main partner I've been playing with here is a wizard. Which is a huge plus for the team as he has range attacks, fireballs, magic missiles, all the classic, classic fantasy game. Um spells your wizard would have. Magic Missile is actually a super classic Dungeons and Dragons spell from first edition, which is the edition we actually play because the guy we play Dungeons and Dragons with is in his 50s and he's been playing the first edition since he was a kid in his 70s, so uh, it's really interesting. If you guys are going grab what the hell is first edition, what are you talking about? Well, they're up the fifth edition now and uh, the fifth edition is a lot more user friendly it's it was their way of trying to get more people to play because the rules and the amount of detail you can get into um, in the first edition is just it's overwhelming if you're wondering why I'm not helping them swing um, there is steam damage near obviously with a hardcore game uh, so I can actually, my teammates, I've actually killed my teammate uh, the other day. Exact same scenario, we're trying to kill a monster and he got in the way and uh, my axe hit him in the head and it killed him. So I really gotta be careful. Uh, obviously blows to the head do more damage than blows to the body. And, um, like I said, uh, my teammates can get right fucked up. So here we go, I told you guys when the second circle appears, uh, I think two portals appear. Only two though, and we actually found one here, so if you wanted to, you can get out right now. But we just got in here, I barely have any loot, so I'm, I'm willing to risk staying a little bit longer. Uh, you have to physically open the portals like this guy's doing, and once you open them, anyone can go through, including enemies, and so situations where my team's been dead and enemies have opened up portals and they're trying to keep them so to speak so they can get some free 
kills and steal your loot. And if you can get it really tricky, you can get around them or rush past them and steal the portal. I actually did that yesterday. I stole a portal on a guy who was a 1v1. I got past him, and then when I wanted to spectate, he couldn't get out of the swarm, and he died from the swarm, so... He stayed to try to kill me, and I stole his portal, and he ended up dying to the swarm. It was pretty comical. Um, but yeah, this game uh, will tickle all your fancies. If you like PvP, this game's got a really satisfying PvP. Right here, our cleric around him there is blocking us. We couldn't get past him. He took a, a mage's fireball right up our ass, and like I said, I lost half my health back because of it. As our good cleric is trying to heal us to make up for it. The defender of the faith, the cleric. Um, yeah, if you like PvP, it's really satisfying PvP, especially when you get a kill, because it's not easy to kill somebody. Um, if you like looting and uh, that aspect of it, the gambling aspect, it's got that as well. Uh, and if you don't feel like a healthy dose of both, like I do, uh, this just does it for you, man. This is a this is a great little game for that. So right now we're fighting in a corridor, and uh, not ideal for me. Because as the barbarian, I want to be up front, or at least have a chance to rush them with my melee weapon. As this cleric comes up to meet me, he gets an axe to the head. So he is very, very, very hurt. And I think my teammate actually kills him because he is so hurt. And, um... Yeah, I want to get out there, but I can't get in there yet if the corridor is too tight. Here comes the rogue. Gonna kill our teammate. Can put an axe in his head. Yeah. So here comes the rogue. There's still the cleric and there's still the blizzard. Uh, the cleric is really, really messed up from my axe shot to the head, so we know he's gonna be close to death. And my teammate smells it. And there he got him. There's another Twitch streamer called Internal Bleeding. He got him with Chain Lightning, a spell. And here's the last wizard uh, going crazy with his uh, magic missiles. Now I'm telling the, the teammate in the random mod, like, I want to rush this guy because I think he's the last one left. And so my wizard decides to give me a haste, which is a speed boost, to run in and get him. That's exactly what I want to do here. He was running for his life and he uses a, like a dash, invisibility dash spell. And I still managed to catch him here. And down he goes. We had a blue crystal ball, which is uh, really, really... You can auction it off. This game has an auction that was much like Tarkov. Um... But my teammate is a wizard, so I'm happy to give him a blue orb. Blue crystal orb. Um, if you're playing with dedicated teammates, guys, um, just a little tip. Make sure... I I was screaming, by the way. Sorry to get off topic. I was yelling at that teammate of ours to please let me out because I have no health. My teammate dropped me a surgical kit so I can get full health while we wait for the circle. But... I was telling him to let me go because I'm almost dead, and he didn't even wait. He just he left on his own, like I said. This kind of thing is funny because it's every man for his own. At the end of the day, if you're not queued up with the guy and he's a he's a random, so you know he was like, "Fuck you guys, I'm out. I got my shit. I'm gone." <laughs> so there is always that risk. And so here we go. I gave him his crystal ball, which, as I was saying before, uh, I. I jacked my portal. Yeah, if you got a dedicated teammate, you can find a blue items for him uh, that he can use. Definitely let him use it because oh, here comes another barbarian. I actually got my teammate. So I try to throw my throwing axe in his back because it benefits the team is what I'm trying to say. Barbarian just died to a skeleton archer, and I believe the cleric does too. Yeah, I can. I make his. I, I put his back to the skeleton archer, and the skeleton archer gets him with a fire arrow. Here, I kill the skeleton archer as well, and there's portals here. So now I know 
I can take the portals and get out. My team is dead. Uh, the random's gone. My teammates back dating me. My random's back in the lobby. But, uh, yeah, I'm going back to grab his crystal ball. I'll bring it in next game for him. So, uh, he has an item. Like I said, I want to auction off items you guys can't use and keep the items, uh, instant death and as you can see that circle is almost gone so there is a full team uh, that went to the hell zone so they're gonna risk it they're just saying we're glad we didn't run into these guys if they were ballsy enough to go down to the hell zone they had some gear and or they were super confident so yeah we're kind of glad we didn't run into those guys <laughs> but um yeah so that was that so that run, which actually wasn't too bad. I think I got a couple more for you guys to tickle your fancy. I think I'll go back to my first or second day. Uh, when I was still kind of new, the overlay was a bit different too, so I think you guys will enjoy that. So let's get into that. Alright guys, this is from my first day playing the game. Actually, the first evening of the day me playing the game. Uh, as you can see, it's a different overlay. I just made these up on a fly. I've always been a huge, huge fan of fantasy artwork, especially women. Uh, Red Sonya and such, and uh, the covers of all the Conan comics. Uh, when I was a kid, there was a bookstore, a used bookstore, um, behind our house. And, uh, I used to go there because they sold Conan comics, the old black and white ones from the 70s and 80s. And I loved it, even though it was black and white because it was gory and there was hot chicks in there. And I just love fantasy and those covers. So, um, you can see my surprise and amazement when I got with my fiance now and uh, her father is a massive 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 Conan fan and he actually has all the books as well as every single comic from the 70s and 80s I owned about 20-25 comics and uh, those years ago I don't have them anymore and it was so funny going through his box of Conan comics. He has them all in plastic and finding all of my old Conan comics are in there. You know, he tells me to go ahead and read them. They're not in pristine condition or anything. So I do flick, flick through them a few times. And uh, it's very nostalgic for me. Because I remember the stories in each of those comics. The barbarian stories and uh, the savage sort of Conan as well as Conan, the Conan saga. All those series and... Uh, yeah, and the Red Sonyas. I used to buy the Red Sonyas as well at that bookstore. And, um, yeah, I just love that fantasy artwork. So I knew with a game like this come out, I'm like, okay, I'm really, really going to hammer down this fantasy aspect because, uh, because it's so cool. It's so, like, up my alley. I love it. I love creating overlays and everything else with my, uh, I use Affinity Pro and I use Premiere, Adobe Premiere Pro for my videos, editing, all my stingers and such, uh, my YouTube videos, my Affinity Pro is where I do all my, my graphics for my channel, like this overlay and everything that you see was done with Affinity Pro, this webcam overlay actually, everything but that, I bought that on Etsy, uh, a medieval camera overlay, I think I got it for like three bucks, uh, but it's animated so I really like that. Like I told you guys, uh, I don't like to fuck around when it comes to things, especially with things I like, so I like to make things look nice always. I like to look nice always. I like it so that when people go on Twitch and they're scrolling through streamers, they might know. I've had that happen so many times in my overlays. People 
welcome to my channel and be like, yo, I was just scrolling and I seen your overlay. And I'll be honest with you, that's the reason why I stopped to check out your channel. And it's nice, you know, because these big streamers, they don't have to put any effort in anymore. They just don't. Uh, they got their viewer base. And, um, yeah, it can be very, very cheap, very lazy, just a basic webcam with no graphics, nothing. And uh, I always think that's lazy. I like to decorate my stuff. I just, this one just looks so clean to me. I wasn't sure about putting Red Sonya on the logo, but she fits. She fits actually perfect. It's, it's, it's really nice. Oh, there's another Mimic. I think at this point, this is like my second day or evening. Maybe it's my, for now it's my first full evening playing the game. I played it in the morning, decided I liked it. I can play it for two hours. Um, with an actual teammate, it's a nightmare to do it alone, FYI. Uh, make sure to always, guys, go to the gathering hall if you're going to play this and look for teammates because it's not meant to be played alone. Um, as a beginner, anyway, once you're comfortable with the game, yeah, it's definitely doable. But yeah, once I had my teammate and me play, and I just started to figure it out, uh, yeah, I'm low key addicted to this game right now. I'm kind of low key as well. Glad it's only going to be here till Sunday because I only want to play this game and uh, nothing else. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll have to wait until the next uh, play test or until the early access is released. Once the game goes into early access, uh, it's available to purchase. This is free to play right now. Uh, it'll be available to purchase and uh, the money goes towards finishing the game, developing it. A lot of games on Steam, on PC, go this route. Right here, we're, we're noticing that these doors are open. So we're tracking somebody. This is why you always close your doors when you're playing this game. We're not entirely sure if it's a um, rogue or not. That's what we're concerned about. If it's a rogue, he could be sitting in a corner with uh, his stealth on. You can see the kill feed in the top right. That's so you can tell how many people are dead. Um, and you can kind of make a mental note of how many people you figure roughly are in the game. Right now I can see that Be Gone killed Great Flame, a zombie killed, uh, the JJ Slayer, definitely not a virgin, a skeleton champion killed Viper 2K. A lot of these people do die to AI. It's, uh, it's, it's a tough game, if you're, especially if you're Neo, you're going to die a lot, it's on souls in that way. You see me swinging at dark because I'm making sure there's not a rogue in here and there actually isn't. We're just guessing that it's a rogue because uh, the trail ends here, you know, the gates are closed and there's a dead end and he hasn't been closing doors behind him so why would he start now? So we're kind of, we're kind of wondering where he went and if in fact it was a rogue. Like I said, this game has a lot of reliance on footsteps and sounds, so you're going to find out if there's uh, somebody coming or not. Like right now, I think we can hear uh, people down this corridor in front of us. Uh, yeah, we definitely do there. Take my protection boost. He throws his fireball, and here comes a barbarian swinging for his life. Like a movie scene right here. And him are just missing blows to the head here. Oh my goodness. I finally take a horizontal swing and it damages him enough for me to get the killing blow. And that was Mr. Be Gone, the one that killed Great Flame, as you can see uh, up ahead. He's got his friend's soul, as you can see in his inventory. If your friend dies, you can uh, grab their soul and go to one of these soul chambers and you can actually res revive your friend a full minute to revive them and then their naked body spawns there and they have to run back to their bodies normally if you revive somebody you have to just grab their gear and uh, carry it on your person and just hand it over to them that one's revived I'm using this uh, healing fountain to get my HP up like I said your HP for me is like the biggest uh, hurdle when it comes to this game for sure 
ass. The biggest pain in the ass, for sure. Uh, trying to always keep your health topped up so that you don't get ambushed and killed immediately. And, uh, you're the one that jumps on top of a team and kills them. Uh, that's a team that's damaged you a bunch of bodies, your three bodies. So we knew that they were uh, fighting here. One of them might have died to a trap. Gone came from this way, so one of them very well could be great blame that they got killed in the kill feed. With his uh, battle axe before I put it into him, there's another body. An archer, or a ranger, sorry. You gotta watch for these floor traps, and they got spikes in the walls too. Very, very, very classic dungeons, fantasy dungeons here, guys. Um, really, 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 really great, well done game. Another room full of traps, floor traps. And a classic a risk person room with a ton of chests around it. Uh, a lot of these spiders die to the floor traps that are trying to come and bite me. You can see their nest I told you guys about, dead ahead. And, uh, you always want to break those nests, guys, so that they don't, um, they don't keep spawning. Yeah, see, floor spikes just killed Jesse Cheese me. He just died of floor spikes in a kill feed. So yeah, people do die to shit like that in this game. He said it's a free-to-play game. You're going to have everybody in it. Everybody, anybody playing it. Uh, just, we just got to download it. So people want to play it, play it a few times, die, and then just never touch it again. Uh, destroy that nest so we can get rid of these spiders. And uh, doing the last little bit of looting. We're in the last circle now. Uh, none of that I needed. And unlike the very first time I played, which I don't think I want to show you guys, I was grabbing everything. It was like a klepto. Stuff that was worth like one gold each. White and gray items. And oh, I was just I was just wasting inventory space. I would you know if we survive, I'd go back and be lucky if I got ten gold at the end. <laughs> so there we go, classic demon bats. They got like a little dash they do. Um, very easy to kill though, usually one hit, yeah. So yeah guys, this really, really, really fun game. And um, if you guys are into like fantasy, fantasy dungeon crawling games, or you're a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, or Dark Souls, or Skyrim, Escape from Tarkov, Hunt Showdown, any of those games. Um, you definitely want to give this game a try, for sure. It's a, it's a great game. I would say on a 1 to 10 scale of rating this game, I would definitely give this game a, a solid 8 out of 10 right now. I know there's so much more. There's more There's more castles they have planned, and more, uh, more classes, more items, more bosses. More game modes. Uh, yeah, it's just a small, small company, um, but they've been really diligent with this, and they're they're getting a really big following in the hardcore gaming community. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely worth checking out. A lot of the things that are nice about small developers is they really listen to their player feedback, their players' feedback. Um, more so than a big company like uh, Activision or anything, you know. Their money's already made. They don't need to answer to anybody versus these guys. A lot of the times, these studios on Steam, you talk to them and you ask them questions on Steam in the comment section, and they'll answer you. Or you report bugs, and you'll get a response back almost immediately. Like, that's kind of the nice thing about these kind of games. So yeah, my teammates found another portal and he's debating if he wants to go loot something else or just get out. Um, a lot of people, he likes to do it as well as he baits people that might be nearby that are alive. Uh, they might see these two portals and they might be on the other side of the door and he might want to race for it. Give him a chance to kill him and, and get his items is what he's trying to do. But um, yeah, 
guys, I think I think that's gonna be it. Uh, let me show you guys some gameplay from uh, the first day, but it's really sloppy and kind of embarrassing. So there really wasn't much of an overlay either. I was using my default cam box, and yeah, the gameplay wasn't very stellar. These this gameplay is not that stellar either, mind you. But uh, still, uh, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a taste of this. This is something that when it gets fully released, you know, when I start to become godly in it, like I wasn't on Showdown, I'll definitely be playing this. Probably, I probably won't be till the middle of the end of the year when this game is released. But I want to give you guys a, a taste of what this game really is, and uh, fans of the game already, which, like I said, there are. If you want to see an ASMR style video of this highlights so with that guys um, I hope you guys have a great day great night I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, yeah check this game out if you're interested in this uh, style of gameplay or gaming all right guys peace out